Hello, Paper Floors, and thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to pick up from where Susan left off, and we're going to finish off the stem. I'm going to show you how to do this gradient colorization for the calyx, the stem, and the leaves, so it gives you that extra realism for when you display your carnation. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over all of the materials for you that you're going to need to complete this. So we're going to start with some paper towel strips, and these can be anywhere between a quarter inch to a half inch wide. Uh, we're really just kind of building up the shape of the calyx so we can wrap it with the green crepe. Then uh, you're going to also need two Copic markers. Uh, this one is the YG17 in grass green. I don't know if you can see that color name, but it's right there. Um, and then you also need your colorless blender, which is number zero. Uh, tacky glue, your scissors, and then um, either the heavy German crepe in grass green. Um, if you get it from Leah Griffith, I believe it's under the color name Juniper. Um, otherwise, if you don't have the German crepe, you can also use the 180 gram uh, Italian crepe number 622 because it's a very close, similar color to what we have in the German crepe. So either of those will work. So I'm actually going to grab the balloon that we just made with Susan. I'm going to finish up the shaping of the calyx here so we have a good base to wrap our crepe around. So to do that, I'm going to grab the strips of my paper towel. And you normally only need about three, but I grabbed a few extra just in case we need them. That in our tacky glue, we're just going to dot some glue along the paper towel. It really doesn't take a whole lot to get that to stick. So I'm going to just grab this and wrap it right underneath the petals, like right where they're glued together in here, and just start wrapping. So you'll wrap around that about a couple of times just to kind of build up some bulk there, and then you're going to start going down the stem and really build that up so you kind of get this like U-shaped calyx. And what I'm doing here as I'm doing this is I'm kind of scrunching up the paper as I wrap so I get the shape that I'm looking for. And you'll want to go down probably about a good inch from the base of your petals to where you want it to stop on the stem. Okay. And this is really just with one strip of the paper towel so far, and you can see we're already starting to get the shape we're looking for. So I'm just going to grab another strip here. Add some more that other way. Add some more glue. And the more generous you are with your glue, the, um, the easier the, the paper is to shape um, because with it being damp from that glue, you can kind of get it to mold into the shape that you actually want. So while it doesn't take a whole lot of glue for it to stick, uh, you may want to be a little bit more generous so you have that extra moisture to start getting it to shape how you want it. Again, we're just kind of wrapping this around, going down, building up the bottom of this here. And I'm just kind of going up and down right here along the middle so we can kind of even out that extra bump from where the petals were built up. So even with just two 
paper towel strips, we're getting close to the shape that we want. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I really like using paper towels is it takes so much less effort to build up the shape that you actually want it to be, um, as opposed to using crepe or tissue or, you know, some thinner paper that you have to use lots and lots of layers for. So we're just going to repeat the process one more time. This time I'm actually going to be pretty generous with my glue and make sure that I've got a nice solid line going all the way down my strip. Again, I'm actually going to start at the base here and start wrapping it up and then kind of go around and back down and this will kind of help round out the base here. And I really only need about half of that strip so I'm going to rip it off there. And then I've got some glue on my fingers here, so what I'm actually going to do is just kind of use that to my advantage to kind of help shape the rest of this and get it to look how I want it to look. Just smoothing out the bottom of that there. So at the base you kind of get this rounded point here. Okay, so that's really all there is to that part. I'm move this gluey bit elsewhere. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my green crepe, and I used the heavy German crepe for this. Uh, I just find it easier to work with for this particular application. So I'm gonna grab my heavy German crepe in my grass green. And I've already cut some pieces, um, so if you want to go ahead and cut these as well, I'll give you the dimensions. So this is a one inch by two inch rectangle with the grain going this way. I also have a two inch by two inch square, and then a two by two and a half inch rectangle, um, all three with the grain lines going this way. So the next thing we're going to do is actually stretch these pieces out and then color them. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of piece paper here, put this here. First one I'm going to start with is actually the two inch square piece. So I'm just going to take this and stretch it all the way out. Okay, so we've got our piece all stretched out. And then what I'm going to do, just to make sure that I have enough paper to wrap around my base here, I'm actually just going to take it and wrap it around to see how much paper I need. So it's about there. And I want to go a little bit over that so I have some extra for the seam so I can glue it shut. I'm just going to pinch that there so I have my mark of how much I need. And then I'm going to cut off that bit. And I'm doing it this way rather than coloring the entire strip just because it's easier to color smaller pieces than it is bigger pieces. So at least this way we know we need a piece this big. So I'm going to even that up just a little bit because it kind of got a little wonky when I cut it. So that's the piece that we have and right now the grain line is still going this way. Um, for me to color it I'm actually going to turn it and color it this way along the grain, I find that's easier for me, but whichever way works for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my colorless blender, and this time we're actually going to use the chisel tip of the marker to color with, uh, rather than the brush tip, because this way you get more uh, even coloring as you go along. So what I'm going to do here is actually take my colorless blender, and I'm basically going to go across the paper, probably starting at about maybe three quarters and going down, um, leaving this top quarter paper un 
saturated with the alcohol. And this will make sense in just a moment. So I'm going to go through and kind of flood the paper. You can also do this with um, just rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip if you don't have the blender, uh, whichever works easier for you. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chisel tip in the green, I'm gonna flip my paper over, and then I'm going to color that top uh, one quarter of the paper that I hadn't touched. And I'm actually gonna bring the color down just a little bit so it kind of works in with that colorless blender. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my colorless blender again and go over where you see that edge. So that'll kind of blend that out so it'll bleed. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside so it'll dry. And then I'm gonna move on to the next piece, which is gonna be the one inch by two inch rectangle. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stretch it out all the way. And then what I'm gonna do is actually about one third down on the calyx shape. I'm going to do the same thing and just measure the piece that I actually need to cover it. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna wrap around to there and give myself a little bit extra for the seam. Pinch that down to mark where I need to cut, pull it off, and then cut the piece off. And then we're just gonna repeat the process on this smaller piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my colorless blender, saturate the paper with the alcohol, and you may want to go over this a couple of times with the alcohol just to make sure it's really good and saturated. So that way the color, once you apply that color, it'll actually bleed through. So flip the paper over and then start coloring that top quarter of the paper. And I do bring the color down a little bit past that so it gets into that alcohol. So it'll start pulling that color down. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. Um, move that so it will dry as well. Uh, this one has dried a little bit, but it doesn't look like it has really given me the gradient that I want. So I'm gonna go back and kind of redo that a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more of my colorless blender here, kind of going over the paper and the colored green. Doing that a few times so it gets really good and saturated. And then just kind of go back over it again with the green. take our uh, two inch by two, two and a half inch rectangle and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to stretch this out and this is the part we're actually going to use to cut our leaves out of. So with this one we're going to actually take that green color and bring it down further than what we did on the other two. Okay so I've got my piece here all stretched out. And then we only need four leaves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to accordion fold this and have it be about three, three eighths of an inch wide. Because these carnation leaves are really skinny. 
and just accordion that until we get four pieces. And I'm going to cut off the excess. And then you can use this to make more leaves later on if you want to make a lot of carnations. All right, so now that I've got my paper accordion folded, I'm going to pull that out again. So we have a rectangle. And then we're going to color this piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my colorless blender and I'm only going to do the very bottom here. So like the bottom, like three quarters of an inch, I'm going to put this colorless blender on. And again, just make sure that you really get that alcohol in the paper and get it really good and saturated. So then when you take your green, this time what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take it here and then bring it down this way. We really want the majority of the leaf to be this darker green color. So I'm going through and just kind of making sure that this tip here gets really good and colored in and saturated in with that green. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is go back with my colorless blender here and just kind of blend that out just a little bit more. So we get a really nice gradient going there. And then we're going to set that aside to dry as well. Close up the markers so they don't dry out. And the good thing about measuring it before you color is so A, you have, you know you have enough paper for the flower because this can vary in size. So if you do, you know, a smaller carnation with a skinnier calyx, you're going to need less paper. Or if you do one with a really thick calyx, you're going to need more. So it's best to measure it by wrapping it around rather than estimating and then not having enough paper. Okay, so we've got this all dried out. Um, so we've got this gradient. Um, so the one good thing about this paper um, and the, the way that the markers saturate it is that it kind of goes through and bleeds through to the other side. So if you get this one side that doesn't really have as good of a blend, sometimes if you flip it over, you'll see that gradient is a lot smoother. So I think we're going to actually use this side, which is the back of the paper, to do what we want to do with this. So we're going to move this out of the way. All right, and it feels mostly dry. I may give that another second to dry. So what we can do in the meantime is cut some strips of our green crepe. So we will need that to wrap our stem. So I'm gonna grab that. Grab a big chunk of it and just cut a strip here. And then we'll use that to wrap. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the rest of these to dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strip of paper that I just cut, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this first. Um, that will make sure that any white that's showing from the uh, paper towel won't show through when we put the calyx piece on. So I'm going to stretch this out. I stretched it out all the way. So I've got a much longer strip now. And then I'm going to take my tacky glue and just kind of apply some glue along the first couple inches here so we can make sure it sticks onto the paper towel really well. And then I'm going to wrap it around and I want to just make sure that when I start this 
that it gets up to that edge of the white paper towel and covers that up so it won't show. So do a full revolution around the top there and then you can start bringing it down. And this part doesn't have to be like super pretty because you're covering it up anyway. Because what happens is as you get towards the bottom here where it starts to uh, taper, it's going to, the paper is going to kind of bunch up a little bit and that's okay because it's just going to get covered over. So just add more glue and just keep wrapping around to cover that helix up. And I'm just actually going to keep going down the stem because we need to build up the thickness of this stem as well. So I'm going to take some glue, put it on my stem wire, and then wrap. And I actually find this is easier than putting the glue on the paper. Um, this is a trick that I learned from Lee Griffith. Um, some people don't care for this because it's a little messy because you do get it on your fingers as you spin the stem around, but I find it's easier and less, to me, it's less messy because then I don't have to worry about glue getting on my petals if I'm, you know, like holding the flower vertically and spinning it because uh, I've got this long strip with glue on it. So just keep adding more glue as I go down. And again, at this point, it doesn't have to be the neatest wrap job because right now we're just adding bulk. We're not uh, we're not going through and like making it look smooth just yet because this is not the final pass on this stem. Let's wrap all the way up to the bottom. Get that off. And then glue the end down. And finish that off. All right, so we've got a mostly covered calyx and stem. You can see there's a little patch of white showing there, but that'll get covered up. So I'm gonna set this down. And honestly, as long as you cover this all in green paper and you wanted to put this in an arrangement and you don't really have the leaves showing because they're going to be stuffed into a vase with other things, you really could just leave it here and call it a day. But um, we really want to showcase this flower. So um, I really want to show all the details and all of the intricacies that this flower does have. Um, so yeah. We're going to make it really nice and really fancy and really just show off that carnation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take this uh, piece that was the two inch by two inch square that we stretched out and I'm actually going to take this and accordion fold it so we get five folds. It's always harder to do with odd numbers than it is to do even numbers for me anyway but we're going to do that and get five so just like that and then what I'm going to do so we make sure that we get enough height here and we get enough of the gradient because we want that gradient to really show here in the middle so I may cut a little bit off the top of this piece here. I'm actually just going to cut off a little bit there just to make sure we get more of the gradient showing. All right so we've got our piece here and I'm actually just going to do cut like a rounded tip just like that. Okay. 
and this will give us our calyx piece with a really nice gradient to it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take my tacky glue, actually, I'm going to look and see which side I like better. Yeah, it's going to be this side. Okay, so I'm going to do the side that I want facing out down on the mat, and then I'm going to take the glue. I'm actually going to line up the glue right underneath the tips of where I cut here. Do a line of glue there, and then another line of glue about a half an inch below that. And then we're going to take our flower and our calyx piece, and we're just going to wrap this around so the tips kind of go up and around where those petals are. So we're just going to take that and wrap it all the way around until we get back to where we started. And then just make sure that along that top where you glued, where you put the glue, you want to make sure that's really good and stuffed down. And then the same for the middle. And then I'm actually going to open this up a little bit so we can glue down the seam. So we have a nice seam there. And then you can see we've kind of gone past where the calyx ends. We've got some bulk here, some extra paper. So what I'm gonna do is actually take my scissors. I'm gonna take this and flatten it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and very carefully cut off the excess paper. And then I'm going to take these two little flaps here that I've got now, put some glue along the edge of those flaps, and a little bit in the middle. side down. Make sure you wrap around the stem and get that really good and stuck down. And then you do the same thing with the other flap here. Just take that and wrap it around, get it stuck down really good. And you can kind of roll it in your fingers to make sure it gets shaped with the paper towel there. So you end up with something like that. So you can kind of see that gradient where you have the darker tips here and then it fades into the lighter tip or the lighter base rather. Okay, so that's step number one for getting the calyx done. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this shorter strip here. So we're going to do the same thing and fold it into five. Just like that. And then we're going to do the same rounded tip. And this one's not going to be quite as tall. You get something that looks like that. Let me unfold it. And they don't have to be perfect. So you can see they're kind of a little wonky, but that's fine. Adds to the realism here. So again, look at the paper, figure out which side you like better. I think I'm going to go with this side with the darker green showing. 
So I'm going to flip that down, put my glue down right underneath the tips here. And then I'm going to do just another small line of glue right below that. Just really light. It doesn't have to be as thick as the top line. Smooth that out a bit. Okay. So then we're going to take our flower and this bottom calyx piece. And I'm actually going to line this up so that the points are about two thirds of the way down on that piece. You can see there. And then we're just going to wrap it around all the way so we get back to where we started. Squish it all down so it stays. Just kind of make sure you keep the same height on all of your points there. Okay, fold this back so I can get my seam. Oh, wait, that's not the end. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so fold this back again so I can get my seam glued. Just like that. Close it back up. Just like that. And then again, you see I've got a bunch of excess here. So I'm going to pull that out on both sides. I got two little wings here. I'm actually just going to cut those off. So I'm going to take my scissors that and that and then again we're going to do the same thing so we're going to fold back these little flaps here and add some glue And then we're going to put one up, make sure it's up against the stem, wrap that around, make sure it's really good and stuck down, and wipe off any excess glue that oozes out if you want. And then on the same, the same thing on the other side, take that other flap, get it stuck to the stem and wrap it all the way around. And then just kind of smooth that out with your fingers as you roll it out. Just like that. Okay, so now you see you've got your shaped calyx with that gradient of the darker green fading into the light, and then again with the dark green fading into the light. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab another strip of our green crepe, stretch it out, and we're going to wrap the stem again. So again, I'm just going to glue the first little bit here on the paper just so I can start my wrapping. And I'm going to start right up here at the base of the second calyx and then just start wrapping all the way around and down the stem. And then you can start adding more glue as you go down to make sure it's stuck. And at this point is where you kind of want to start 
making sure that the stem gets smoothed out. Um, and then you don't get any like bumps from twisting the paper and things like that as you're wrapping around. Okay, so I'm just gonna go all the way down. So we've got a decent thickness started on the stem here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the little knuckles that kind of protrude out from the stem. So you see these little, these little bumps here that come out of the stem and where the leaves come out. So I'm going to start adding those. So I'm going to take some of the bits of the green crepe that I tore off from wrapping the stem. I'm going to take a couple of those and I'm actually going to cut them into thinner strips here. Take that and like cut that down by half. So it's a thinner strip, so it's about a quarter inch wide. Okay, so I'm going to start taking these so we can build out those knuckles. So again, I'm going to Put some glue. This time I'm actually going to glue the entire strip. And then we're going to start, we're going to figure out exactly where we want to put the knuckle. So on this one, I think I'm going to go up a little higher than I did on the last one. I'm going to go up here and start wrapping. So we do one full revolution. And then you basically you're just going to go up a little bit and then down a little bit to build that out. And you're gonna need a few strips here. So you can either do you know these little smaller pieces or you could take a longer skinny strip like this and use that to build it up. Which is what I'm gonna do here. So it'll go a little faster. So again, take the strip. I glue all the way down the skinny strip here. And then go back to where I was adding paper before and then just kind of go back and forth with it and still you, until you start seeing that bump. got a little bit of a bump started there. Just like that. Okay, so we've got that going. And you can make it a little bit bigger if you want to. Um, I may actually add a little bit more to that. So let me take another strip here. and make some longer thin strips that will just make it easier. So I'm just taking that strip but kind of folding it down so I can just snip and do some really thin strips like that. same thing. Just add our glue. Okay. 
Now I do want this to get a little bit bigger, so I'm going to add just a little bit more to that. So I'm going to start wrapping this around, going back and forth, back and forth until I start getting the size of knuckle that I want. That looks about good. So I'm going to pull that off there, kind of smash that down, roll it in my fingers a little bit at the top and bottom just to get the shape right. And then I'm going to go down, I don't know, let's go down about two inches and we'll add another one. So I'm just taking the strip that I still have glue on and we're going to do the same thing. So I'll just kind of go up a little bit, go down a little bit, back and forth until you build up the shape that you want. Okay. And again, that one's still a little skinnier than I'd like. So take this other strip that I cut and do it again. And just taking that, sticking that down, and then strapping it back and forth to get that shape. Just about there, maybe a couple more wraps, and that'll get it. Okay, so that looks about right. Right, and then again, just kind of roll it in between your fingers and on the top and the bottom so you kind of smooth that shape out a little bit and then we're going to wrap the entire stem one more time just so we get a really smooth coverage over these knuckles all right Move all my glue bits from it being on my fingers all right and then we're going to take that strip and we're back to the regular, like, wider strips now. Stretch that out and then do one more stem wrap. So again, I just do a little bit of glue to start it. We're going to start right here. Do one full revolution and then start bringing it down. And then on these knuckles is where you really want to put glue to make sure they're really nice and stuck down. second knuckle there and then I'm going to start adding more glue as I go down the rest of the stem. Okay, and then 
again just at where the knuckles are just kind of roll that in your fingers to make sure that the crepe tape is nice and stuck down just like that okay so we've got the right stem thickness now and we've got our little knuckles where we're going to put our leaves so then the next bit that we're going to do is actually some uh, advanced coloring on the stem itself before we put the leaves on so i'm going to grab my markers again i'm going to take my colorless blender and i'm actually going to add just a little bit right here underneath the calyx right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more at the base of this knuckle here. So you're really wanting to cover just over half of that. Make sure that gets really good and saturated. I'm actually gonna go back up here and do this again because it dried. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my green. So in between where I put the colorless blender, I'm just gonna color the stem, this darker green color, and bring that down into that knuckle, okay? And then take my colorless blender again and just kind of make sure that that blends out really nice on the knuckle itself. Because you want the bottom part of this knuckle to be a lighter green. And you'll see why in just a moment. Okay, so then again, here I'm going to put a little bit more of the blender at the base, like right underneath it. And then take my green and start going down the stem. I'm just rolling that stem in my fingers just so that way the marker gets the entire stem covered. Okay, so I get to about this point and then I was gonna switch back to my blender, color the bottom half of the knuckle. with the alcohol and then finish coloring the top here with the green. And then of course you can go back with that blender a little bit more if you want to, just to really make sure that that gives you that good gradient. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this down just a little bit more with the blender. And then we're going to finish coloring the stem. So just like that. And now flip it over. And then we have the whole rest of this stem to color. So just get this top here while the blender's still wet. And then just start going down the rest of the stem. through and making sure I didn't miss any spots on the stem here as I was turning the turning the stem. Okay, so it looks good. All right, so I'm going to set that down and let it dry for a moment. Put my caps back on my markers. 
and then we're going to move on to cutting out our leaves. So we've got our piece of colored crepe. Um, I do want the darker side to face out. So we're going to accordion fold to get four, just like we did before. wider than I should, so we're going to bring that in a little bit and do it again. Okay, so we have four folded like that. And then the leaf shape on these are just a little bit different than what you might be used to because the leaves actually grow out from here and they wrap around this knuckle. So we want to have these leaves with like a rounded base. So I'm going to take my paper. I'm actually just going to round off the bottom here. So I get something like that. And then I'm basically just going to take from where that rounded part ends and just bring that straight into a point here at the end. Just like that. Flip it over. And then cut my point. down to where it was rounded off. And this is actually a little bit fatter than I'd like, so I'm gonna go in and thin that out some. And you can continue to fine tune the shape of the leaves. But basically you want to get something that looks like this. Okay, so again, you want the darker side facing up. So when you add your leaf, the darker side is what gets curled out. So I'm going to take my curling tool, you can use scissors, whatever you feel comfortable with. And from here, you're going to curl that out. And then what I'm actually going to do is since there's still a little bit left of the stretch in this, I'm going to cup the base where, I, where we cut it round the bottom of the leaf and just kind of cup that out. So you get like a little spoon looking shape there. I'm going to do that to all four of my leaves. So curl, and cup, just like that. Okay, so these are still attached, so I'm going to separate those. And then again, just curl and cup. So you get a shape that looks like that. Okay, and then you cup that. shape like this. And then I'm going to take my tacky glue and add a generous amount on that cupped portion and just a little bit above that too. Take my flower and I'm 
going to put the base of the leaf right at the base of where that knuckle is. Straighten it out a little bit and then glue it down. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take that cupped piece and just make sure that it's wrapped around the knuckle just like that. So you can see now why we wanted to do that gradient here because you have it in the leaf as well and you really want that to blend in together. Okay, so then we're going to take our next leaf, do the same thing, put glue on the cupped part. And we're actually going to place the leaf directly across from where we placed our first one. Again, just make sure that it's right at the base of the knuckle and then wrap that around like that. And make sure that's really good and stuck down. And then we'll go back and curl these more. But I just want to make sure that these are stuck first before we make any further adjustments. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing the bottom two leaves. So a little bit of glue. Like that. Like that. And then, so you've got these two leaves coming out this way. So we want the next two leaves to go this way. So I'm gonna hold this like this, place this one here, make sure it's stuck down, wrap it around the knuckle. Get it to stick. And then I'm gonna take my other leaf and do the same thing. Stick it at the base of the knuckle. Stick it down. And then make sure it wraps around the knuckle itself. And make sure it's really good and stuck down. Okay. All right, so now while this bottom set of leaves dries, I'm gonna go back and kind of adjust the top leaves here. So I'm gonna kind of pull it down a little bit and curl it a bit more with my thumbnail, just like that. Okay. And that looks like it's pretty well stuck now, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one too. Just like pull it back just a little bit and curl them down some more. And now you have a finished carnation stem with the advanced coloring techniques. So I hope you learned a lot today and you had fun while doing it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And I do hope that you continue to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day.